But yeah. here's what the league found in the statement that was released out of the blue yesterday, late morning. And this focuses on Brady. The, and this goes back to when he was with the Patriots. The, Patriots. Right. the Dolphins had impermissible communications with quarterback Tom Brady in 2019 and 2020 while he was under contract to the New England Patriots. Those communications began as early as August 2019, before he even began his final regular season with the New England Patriots. They continued through the 2019 season and postseason. These numerous and detailed discussions were conducted by Mr. Beal, who in turn kept Mr. Ross and other Dolphins executives informed of his discussions with Mr. Brady. And look, I heard throughout the 2019 season the Patriots were afraid he was going to land with the Dolphins. You said it, you've said it many times. Because of the times. connection to Bruce Beal. Sure. Bruce Beal and Tom Brady are thick as thieves. Right. There are photos of them together at the Kentucky Derby. They are connected. And then Bruce Brian Flores is from New England's there. Yeah. So there's a lot of things to so, connect to. So Beal's talking to Brady while he's with the Patriots right. about joining the Dolphins when he becomes a free agent in March of 2020, and they tampered with him throughout that year. That's the Patriots' side. Yeah. Then here comes the Buccaneers' side. Of it. Mm -hmm. The Dolphins had impermissible communications with Brady and his agent, Don Yee, during and after the 2021 season while he was under contract with the Buccaneers. Those discussions began no later than early December of 2021 and focused on Brady becoming a limited partner in the Dolphins and possibly serving as a football executive, although at times they also included the possibility of his playing for the Dolphins. Both Ross and Beal were active participants in these discussions. No so, while Tommy, happy birthday, Tommy, by the way, hmm. happy birthday, uh, while he is playing for the Buccaneers yeah. and making a push for Super Bowl win number eight, Super Bowl appearance number eleven. God, it's impossible. You need you got you need more than two hands to count. Super Bowl the number seven. Of Super Bowl. Seven. Super Bowl, wins. It would have been. Oh, eight you're, wins. Yeah, you're right. He's pushing for yeah, eight right, and appearance right. number eleven. Gotcha. Gotcha. So while while he's that, he's all in with the Bucks. He's talking to the Dolphins. Right. He's talking to the Dolphins. He's laying the foundation for his next move. And this is why we always say that. Can we still say shit even though we're not in our regular I think habitat? So. Okay. Mm. This is why we always say them, you know. No, we can't. This is why we always say they're full of it. Yeah. Because we know what's going on behind the curtain. Yes. And we know that Brady's got plenty of angles and plenty of games. And 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 and, and it's it's funny because I don't think he's very good at overtly and directly lying. When right. he was asked about the Dolphins earlier this year, he didn't deny it. He didn't. He would change he the subject. Deny yeah, he changed the he subject. Yeah, he changed the subject. And maybe he knew at the time. They're looking around. Right. Maybe he'd gotten a text from Beal. Oh, geez. I'm I had sure to, he knew. I had to be interviewed by this Mary Jo White. Right. I had to give him my phone records. I had to do this. I had to do that. Tread lightly, Tom. Be careful what you say because they're on to us. Yeah. They, and, we, and we were on to it, and the league got on to it. And, you know, one of the things that hit me yesterday, uh, so much for anyone who would insist there was no issue between Tom Brady and Bruce Arians. Why is he talking to the Dolphins? In the 2021 season, as the season's coming down the home stretch, he's talking about playing for the Dolphins the next year. He knew he was leaving the Buccaneers, just like he knew he was leaving New the Patriots. Yeah. The fact that he ended up back with the Buccaneers is astounding in hindsight. And it, it was is. Flores slamming the door on the path to Miami. There's no other seat for Tom Brady, including San Francisco. Right. And, and is it stupid to think there wasn't at least some conversation if Brady isn't going back to Tampa and he's looking for another landing spot? Is it stupid to think? Remember, he went out there. He was we were sleeping at the in, combine, yes, and the 49ers coaches and the GM or the, Shanahan was still in San Francisco. The, uh, Shanahan's in San Francisco. They hire his college teammate right. Ryan Greasy to be the quarterback quarterback's coach. coach. Right. Brady is sleeping in his childhood bed in San Mateo, and. We're to believe that there was no discussion of any kind about the possibility of Tom Brady playing for the 49ers this year. Yeah, so, I doubt that. And now, now, I never heard it, but this is one I where— I never did either. It's, it's, the circumstances are impossible to ignore. Right. So, so, that's the Brady side of it. And, uh, again, but for the Flores lawsuit, he, he would have become a minority owner of the team, possibly an executive, and then it's just a matter of time before they work out the deal. And I was told it was done— it was all window dressing at this point. Brady to the Dolphins was done. I, 
Sean that's Payton what we were saying then. To the Dolphins, and that's the last was piece done? of this that they were caught for tampering. Right. In January of 2022, the Dolphins had impermissible communications with Don Yee, the agent for Sean Payton, about having Payton serve as Miami's head coach. Miami did not seek consent from New Orleans to have these discussions, which occurred before Sean Payton announced his decision to retire as head coach of the Saints. Before he announced his decision, mm-hmm. following that announcement, I Miami was told back then too to speak to Sean Payton and New Orleans. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. There. I, I just, I was even told back then, and I think, you know, we originally said it when we were on the air, February 28th or 29th, whatever day that was, too, that, that the, the, the conversation with Sean Payton had got far enough down the road with compensation yes. being talked about. Yes. You know, I was led to believe, too, and this is allegedly right now because I've had some people push back, but, man, my sources have been pretty strong with this, that there was even compensation discussed with Tampa and Miami. All right? It was... So, Everything was done. Yes. It was just a matter of the first domino right. being hit. Right. And Brian Flores grabbed the first domino right. and threw it out the window. Right. It was going to happen. And th- this is proof that this stuff happens all the time. It'll be interesting to see if it happens going forward. This is more than I think normal. Right. Okay. But, but, yes. but and playmakers, by the way, available wherever books are sold. Sean Payton was going to be the coach of the Cowboys in 2019. Everything was in place for it to happen. And when Anthony Davis, then of the New Orleans Pelicans, tells Mickey Loomis, who was doing double duty as GM of the Saints and the VP of basketball operations for the Pelicans. When he finds out Davis wants out, he says to Sean Payton, I can't be the guy who's responsible for both of these yeah, guys the two leaving biggest New Orleans sports stars. the same month. Right. It's, not, it's not happening. Sorry, we can't do it. Right. That was a day away from the first domino falling, which would have been Cowboys fire Jason Garrett vacancy arises they act like they're doing a search yeah a real search they're not doing a real search they're waiting for the right time to call the saints and work out the deal that's already been worked out to acquire sean payton from the saints and this this is one of the craziest facts because jeff ireland taking the call from chris greer now ireland is the former dolphins gm who's the assistant gm in new orleans now the current Dolphins GM, Chris Greer, calls him and asks about Peyton, and Ireland tells him, don't waste your time. That was coincidental to the conversations that were actually happening. Right. So, yes, the, the, the Saints denied permission, but and see, that's where this, these findings are incomplete. There was a lot going on behind the curtain. And this may be why, because people have asked me, why weren't the Saints compensated for being victims yeah. of tampering. Right. Why weren't the Patriots compensated? Why weren't the Buck compensated? Because right. I think they were in on it. They knew what was happening. This is how the sausage gets made. This is why it's so delicate a process for the NFL. The Patriots knew they wanted to move on for the, Brady, the so they were good with care. that. They didn't the care. The Patriots didn't care. Right. The Saints, again, it was already done, so the Saints were talking to the Dolphins. Right. The Saints aren't complaining about right. it. The Bucks weren't going to hold Brady hostage after do, what no, he did. Right. No, and, and it was all set up. And, oh, by the way, the Bucks tampered with Tom Brady. Of course. obviously, if Bruce the, Arians, yeah. at the scouting combine in 2020, was asked what they're going to do at quarterback, and he said, we're going to call Tom Brady and Phillip Rivers. They were both under contract with other teams at the time. The league didn't do anything about it because it almost never does anything about it. And then after Brady signed, they started putting out this bullcrap See, thank you. I said bull crap. This bull crap story about how it all worked, and they never talked to him until they were able to talk to him. Baloney. Yeah, they were right. covering their tracks. They tampered. And I, look at it this way. If the Dolphins tampered with Tom Brady yeah, they were already on the and inside got track. him, right. how could a team that didn't tamper with him get him? Yeah, right. If the team that was talking to him failed, right. how could it be that a team that followed all the rules and had no direct communications with him until the league year began in 2020, how in the right. hell did that team right. get him? They tampered too. And somebody asked me yesterday, why weren't the Bucks, the Saints, or the Patriots compensated in some way for being the victims of tampering? And that's why. Yeah. Because they either didn't care or they were guilty as well. And the Bucks were guilty of it. And I think the Saints and the Patriots didn't care. And the Saints were, were in on it. They were in on the conversations for what it was going to take to get Sean Well, it, it's like we always, like Mike Tomo, you know, we want volunteers, not hostages. A guy like Tom Brady, if he's trying to say, hey, I want to move on, do something else. He had been there. He'd won a Super Bowl. He brought a ton of money to the Bucks, all that type of stuff. They were, it sounds like, willing to, you know, appease him to do, okay, go ahead. You know, I will say, I don't know if it shows 
a ton into the relationship. Like, I'm with you. I think there is some friction there between Bruce and Tom Brady for sure. But I still think, like, you know, at the end of the day, too, this was just about Brady – for lack of a better way, maybe being selfish and just trying to add to his lure as a person. He's going to go to the next team where I'm the owner, I'm the quarterback, they're building the house down there, they're going to move their family there, and then he's going to set himself up with, as we've discussed a few times here already since we've been back on air you know, the, the last week, the Dolphins have one of the best teams on paper in all of football. They're, they're like the Bucks were a f- few years ago where you look at them and go, man, if they could just get a quarterback or a player here, they might have the best team in the game. Miami is on the verge of that. So I can understand Brady wanting to make that move for a, a myriad of reasons. Ownership, Beal, you know, of course, Sean Payton. Payton's, they're both uh, represented by the same agent, right? They're both right? represented by Yee. And it's yeah, funny because right. they mention Yee's name as it relates oh, to Payton. Payton, but not but Brady. But they don't mention it as to Brady. It's, What's up with that? Because it's like they didn't want to, it's like they didn't want to go all in that this was such a coup d'etat. I don't know what, I don't know why that. I, I, I saw that too. That made no sense to me. By the way. Thank you. Thank you very well much. Every, I'm, I read about it a few minutes ago. <laughs> but uh, um, but th- that, that's where it is shocking. And it is shocking to have names like Sean Payton, Tom Brady, you know, be associated with this. And here's one other thing that just is the biggest thing to me. And I wanted to hit on this when you talked about the Stephen Ross thing. The, the, yeah, the money drop in the bucket, definitely. The first round pick, I'm just, just remember it. We're, we don't know what Tua is, right? We don't know what Tua is. I, this puts more pressure on Tua. Because the, 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 the Dolphins are supposed to have two first-round picks next year. This was the year to find out if Tua can do it. And if he can't, we have the assets to go up and get a quarterback or make a move and get a quarterback next year if Tua doesn't work out for the, 2020, and, and for the 2023 season. Man, you just took away a huge leg of Great their point. ability to bargain, do whatever, get up in the draft, trade to get a quarterback, whatever. That, to me, is the biggest blow of all, and it does put a lot of pressure on the Tua situation to Miami even more now. What did they give up to get Tyree Kill? They gave up five picks in they all, did. so that makes it even harder. Yes. Now you take away a first rounder next year, and it's even harder to maneuver if they decide they want right. to maneuver, and they better not tank. That That's off the table now, <laughs> right? I don't think Stephen Seriously. Ross is going to be walking around the facility once his suspension ends saying we need to improve our draft position in 2023, regardless of what it means for our win-loss record in 2022. We're going to get to that, though. Here's the quote from Roger Goodell. Yeah. Before I get to that, right. something that flashed through my brain, and that's why I love talking these things through. When they began talking to Brady in December of 2021, yeah. was it to partner Brady – with Brian Flores, or they already decided that Flores was out and Peyton was in. I, I, I think it was. I think it was already Sean Payton. I do. I, just, just between this, you know, and the other thing that leads me to believe that this was there's a little more communication maybe between Peyton and Brady is the fact that you and I both know that in New Orleans the year before when Brady was making the decision to go to New England, to Tampa Bay, yep. Brady was very much on the radar for the Saints to be the quarterback there if Drew Brees wasn't willing to accept the $25 million contract for the year. Yep. If he was Brady, if, if Brees was going to hold their feet over the fire for more money, that is the other part of this that I know people probably go, oh, they're crazy, these two. They don't believe that. They had Brady on their radar. There was communications there. So there's obviously a connection between Peyton and Brady there. And at some point, it morphed from... Brady is the fallback if Breeze chooses not to play because there was a question as to whether he's going to play in 2020. But even after he chose to play, there was still that lingering attraction. And this all goes back to your dad's head coach, Bill Parcells. Mm -hmm. Not that he was involved in any of this, but Brady wants a head coach with that Parcells mindset. Brady wants a head coach who is going to bust his ass, who's going to grind, who's going to be like Belichick. And right. That's what Peyton is. And he's this Bel- isn't he's about, Belichick with personality, this is, maybe. This more. isn't right. about Bruce Arians, the person. This right. is about Bruce Arians, the coach. Arians was basically semi retired. Arians wasn't grinding the way that Peyton does. Peyton talked about staying up till 2 a.m. every night, living on Diet Coke and. And, and, you know, and candy bars, st- studying film, looking for any edge, just grinding, 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 grind. And Brady was with a guy like the that for 20 grinder. years the in New England. Right. And then he got a couple of years of it with Arians, and he sees this is a different guy altogether. He doesn't work like Belichick does. And where you get that edge 
that one thing that makes a difference, that, that decision that gets made at the right moment, in the right spot, at the right time that provides the difference between winning and losing a key game, that comes from all those hours you put in of busting your ass. And I think that's why he had an attraction to get together with Sean Payton. Yeah, and, I, I understand that. And out of the fact he's one of the best offensive minds in the history of football, you're right. And then I think when you couple that together with the team that they got down there, I'm sure Sean Payton and Brady were like, damn, if we can get down there with that group, you know, that 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 team and what they got, we can make some moves and, and, and in a hurry. So I understand, you know, the allure of, of that situation. I do. And competing with the Patriots. Oh, my gosh, that would have been great. Twice a year. It really would have. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.